Hey, what's up, guys? So today we'll be talking about a concept from electric circuits, and it's called uh, Wheatstone's bridge. So let me write that down. Wheatstone's bridge. Right. So let's do a little recap from resistors in series and parallel. So in a series combination, if you have two resistors in such a manner, let's say R1 and R2, then R equivalent across these two terminals is R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. And the way you add five to resistors added in series is if the same current passes through both resistors. And let's talk about parallel. Right, so this is R1. And across these two terminals, the expression for R equivalent is 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Right. Now, and, and, and the way you identify if two resistors are in parallel is if the voltage across both the resistors is the same. Now, what if this is not the case? Sometimes it's not it's not always that you have resistors in series and parallel. It's not very clear all the time. Let's take an example. Let's say I have something like this. Right. Let's say this is a two ohm resistor, a one ohm resistor, a four ohm resistor, and a two ohm resistor. And let's say the middle one is a 5 ohm resistor. And this is connected to a 6 volt battery. Right here. Now, in this case, none of the resistors are in series or parallel. So, how do you solve the circuit? Well, that's where the Wheatstone bridge concept comes into play. So, if you have something like this, uh, a diamond shape of resistors like this and you have some device here in the middle uh, it could be anything but I'm gonna take a resistor R5 R1 R2 R3 R4 so if you have four if you can simplify any circuit in this manner then the Wheatstone's bridge concept says that if the ratio of R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4 that implies that the current through the resistor, through the fifth resistor, R5, has to be zero amperes. Now, there are ways to prove it. One is through Kirchhoff's laws, and um, there's a more analytical point of view which um, I'd like to explain. So let's come back to the question now. So since I have a six volt battery and this is the positive terminal, so there will be some current in the positive direction here. Right, and this current goes up to this point here and let's say it gets divided into two parts let's say the first part that goes through the 2 ohm resistor is I1 and the second part that goes through the 1 ohm resistor is I2 and let's say the net current is I which is equal to I1 plus I2 now since, since it gets divided into I1 and I2 wherever this current goes it may go here, here, whatever when it comes back here, I'll always have I1 plus I2. And this, this the current here always has is gonna be I. Alright. Now if if let's 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 look at the parallel combination of resistor once more. Suppose I have these two resistors in parallel, right? So let's say I have the two ohm resistor and I have the one ohm resistor in a parallel combination with a 6 volt battery and since they are in parallel combination so the voltage across both the resistors has to be 6 volts and if I'm interested in finding the current let's say I through uh, the 2 ohm resistor is equal to V by R by Ohm's law and that is 6 by 2 that is equal to 3 amperes similarly if I'm interested in the current through the 1 ohm resistor it's going to be V by R again and 6 amperes is what I get. Now if we observe 
I have more current flowing through the 1 ohm resistor than the 2 ohm resistor. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there is the current always chooses the least resistive path. So if we come back to this problem here, now let's say I reverse the polarity of the cell. Let's say this is the cell and let's say this is 6 volts. Right. So let's say this is this is the new this is the case that we are looking at. Oh damn it. Okay. Yeah. Let's say this is the case that we are looking at. I reverse the polarity, right? And 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 since this is the case, I'm gonna have a current here and 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 let's let's ignore this part for a minute. So I'm gonna have a current that starts from this direction. Right? And as it comes to this point, it's again going to get divided into two parts. Now, since the ratio is the same, that is 2 is to 1 and 2 is to 1, and since I know that the current chooses the least resistive path, um, well, from, from, from this situation, I can say that I2 is greater than I1, right? And since we know that the current always chooses the least resistive path, then I can say that um, the, the, the current since the ratio is the same, so I'm going to have I1 and I2 on either branch. And since two ohm, the 2 ohm resistor is the smaller one, I can say that I2 should flow through the 2 ohm resistor and I1 should flow through the 4 ohm resistor. Right? Now, let's remove this. Now, let's look at our question once again. I have a current I flowing in this direction and, and I1 is flowing like this. And I have I1 again in this branch. Similarly, here I have I2 flowing here, and I have I2 flowing in this branch. So, we find that there is no current flowing through this device here, which happens to be a 5 ohm resistor. So, in effect, I can actually ignore this device completely since there is no current flowing through it. And this greatly helps me to simplify my circuit. This is what my circuit becomes. So this is my 2 ohm resistor, this is my 4 ohm resistor, this is my 1 ohm resistor, and this is my 2 ohm resistor for my 6 volt battery. Now these two are in a series combination, and so are these. And once I find the net equivalent of this, which is 6 and 3, then these two become in a parallel combination and hence I can solve the circuit. So hence we see that the Wheatstone bridge concept is really really important in, in certain situations when the resistors are neither in series nor in a parallel combination at first. Right, that's for me. Thank you.